morning everyone. Thank you so much for coming along. Welcome to Living Well Expo and particularly to Carla Weir of Edible Weeds. Carla is a lifelong nurturer of gardens, healers of spirits and a seeker of connection. Carla established the award-winning non organic gardens where she mentors and empowers others to connect with their gardens, grow their own food and embrace sustainable living practices. And Carla's going to introduce a lot of uh, local, uh, familiar edible plants. And a lot of us may have cited these and not recognised them as being edible. I'm going to hand over to Carla Weir and let's give her a round of applause. Thank you so much. How are we feeling out there today? Hey, hey, how are we? So um, I'm Carla, nice to meet you all. This is my lovely assistant, Connie. And we're here today from Gaia's Organic Gardens, um, as mentioned, an organisation that are dedicated to helping the community to grow their own food. So on saying that, who here already has a veggie garden? Awesome, lots of shows of hands. All of you who didn't put your hand up, come and see us after the presentation and have a chat. Because we believe that everybody should be growing their own food. It is the most amazing feeling to go out there and pick your own produce and then eat it. It tastes amazing, all of the nutrients, all of the energy intact. And uh, it is my belief that this is the way that I'm going to change the world to a better place is by encouraging people to grow their own food in their own backyards. So I would like you all to leave today feeling empowered and feeling inspired about using some of the things that you already have around you in your own home to improve your health. Stop looking for the magic pill. It's not going to arrive. The answers are right in front of you in your own hands and you have the power to change your life by understanding the world around you. And I'm hoping to do that for you today by explaining a bit about edible weeds. It's a bit of a strange subject, isn't it? Edible weeds, who would think that you could actually eat your own weeds? It's a bit of a strange thing, isn't it? So I'm here to show you today that a lot of the things that we have around us are actually highly prized medicinal herbs and we're calling them weed. Uh, weeds. First slide, please, Connie. So what is a weed? Well, a, the classification for a weed is simply a plant growing in the wrong place. Now... In my circumstance, I've actually got some tomatoes and some rocket growing up in my pavement. Is this a weed? Who knows? It's still a plant in the wrong place, isn't it? So I, I, I want you all to, to break down a bit of this misconception of, of, the, of the fact that you have weeds. They're actually just misunderstood plants. And they were all brought here for one reason or another in early settling times. These plants are called weeds because they have higher chance of survival and as we all know we live in a giant desert where it's very difficult to grow plants and the whole time we're spraying these ones that are growing very easily isn't that a bit absurd <laughs> um, so why are we removing them without knowing their full potential well I'm not really too sure but I'm hoping that you all will understand your weeds after today and um, and, and go home and, and you know not have to remove them as such but having some understanding of how you can use them in a better way next slide please Connie Thank you. <laughs> it's my first PowerPoint presentation, by the way. Usually I do this out in a field and we go for a forage under trees. <laughs> it's a bit of a different scenario here. Okay, so some of the points to remember when you're foraging for weeds. Okay, so the first and most important thing is to be really careful of where you're foraging because, as we know, a lot of the places in our um, public environment are sprayed very heavily with particular chemicals which can be harmful to our health. So it's really important if you're going for a forage that you pick somewhere that you know has not been sprayed. Now, where are some places that we know have not been sprayed? Hopefully, oh, yes, sir. Bright. Exactly. Thank you, you bright, bright young star of the future. That's exactly right. At home, hopefully, your houses are safe from sprays and you're all making a conscientious decision not to spray in your own backyards. And this is most likely the best place for you to go for a bit of a forage. If you know somebody who's got a bit of a property or something on the outskirts of town, that's probably your second next best option. But I err on the side of caution when it comes to foraging on public land or beside roads for these reasons. They can bioaccumulate a lot of toxins from the runoff of roads, so it's very important that we're not picking them from the side of the roads and things. 
Okay, the next most important point to remember is that you should only ever eat a plant that you can identify with 100% certainty. Now, this is very, very important because some of our edible weeds look the same as some that are not very good for us. Some of them can cause us to have a very upset tummy and might end up a bit of a trip to the loo. Um, and in the worst case scenario, it can be a trip to the hospital. So it's really important that we can identify them with 100% accuracy. If you would like to learn how to identify the plants furthermore after today, I urge you to come along on our forage and we'll talk a bit more about the key identifying factors of weeds as well. So as, um, as a follow-up to that, some plants or even parts of the plant are poisonous. So it's important that you know not only the plant itself, but the different parts of the plants that are edible. And I'll use the uh, edible weeds as a bit of a, uh, sorry, edible flowers as a bit of a reference for this. In a lot of cases, the petals of edible flowers are edible and the leaves are not. So it's important that we understand which parts of the plant are edible and which are not. Another thing to uh, remember when eating your own weeds is that some weeds are very high in oxalic acid, as are almonds and other things that we eat already. But it's just one of those things you want to do everything in moderation. So don't go too overboard or you can end up with uh, a bit of buildup of oxalic acid that your uh, liver can't digest there. So it's important that we're doing everything in moderation and eating your weeds is uh, no exception to that rule. And uh, just erring on the side of caution for pregnant women as well. A lot of these are highly prized medicinal herbs that can have different effects on the bodies that we are not yet fully understanding. So if you are in any stages of pregnancy, we urge you to avoid edible weeds um, just as you would any medicinal herb. Thank you, Connie. Thanks. Okay, so why would you bother eating your weeds? Well, did you know that some of your weeds are actually more nutritious than those things that you're growing in your vegetable gardens? That's right, here we are like crazy trying to water our lettuce and keep it in the shade over the middle of summer, all while we're po possibly spraying something that's growing next to the veggie garden that's actually better for you. I know everybody's got their you know, wide eyes looking at me like, are you serious? Yes, I am. And we're going to have a look at some of the nutritional benefits of some of these weeds. And I can guarantee you guys are going to be absolutely shocked when you find out what's in some of that stuff you're pulling out of your pavement. It's pretty amazing. So it's better for the environment. Obviously, we don't have to do very much to grow weeds. <laughs> so it's a lot better from the, for the environment. We don't have to uh, go to the shop, use any fuel, we don't have to use any water, we don't have to use any plastic to be able to grow and eat our own weeds. They are readily available. We all know where we can find a few weeds and I bet you're sitting there thinking, yes, I've got a patch of that growing in my backyard somewhere. And as I've mentioned, they're very easy to grow. So these are things that are already growing and are around us that we don't even have to try to be able to find. So by eating your weeds, you're also giving um, a, a very good management system for controlling your weeds. So by understanding different roles and uses of the weeds, it can um, help us to manage them. So instead of going out and having to mow them, hand pull them, spray them, eradicate them, by understanding which different weeds are beneficial and which are not, we can give a bit of an itemised uh, strategy to be able to go out there and to deal with some of these more problematic gardening issues that we're having. Guess what? They taste delicious. Yeah, that's right. I bet you wouldn't guess that. We've got a great mixture of nuttiness, zestiness. Um, you've got some nice mustards and things in there. So you can get an absolutely gorgeous spectrum of flavours just through your green bowl of weeds. It's funny, isn't it? Uh, reducing chemicals, reducing plastic use, and best of all, they are free. The price is right. Excellent. Thank you, Connie. And uh, we'll have a few moments for some questions uh, before we get into some of the specific weeds themselves as well. So why are weeds the bad guys? Well, I don't really know why weeds are the bad guys because they have so many benefits. The number one benefit is obviously to stabilise our soils. As I've mentioned, we live on a giant sand dune. It is very unstable and very poor soil here. So all Mother Nature is doing by bringing in weeds is trying to remineralize, remineralize the soil and feed the microbes, preserving the soil structure. Where in nature do you see bare open patches with nothing in them? 
nowhere. It's a very unnatural situation. So that's why when you've got your garden there and you're trying to keep it really bare, Mother Nature's just keep bringing in weeds because that's what's meant to happen in the world. She's just re-establishing a bio biodiversity in the area. Okay, so we're understanding why she's doing some of these things. Soil indications. Uh, weeds also off offer you a lot of insight as to what's going on in your environment. For example, if you have used a synthetic fertiliser like urea on your lawns, you are going to see an outburst of cape weed because this is a sign that you've got too much nitrogen. So often by understanding the role of that particular weed, we can understand what's going on in our environment, we can make those changes accordingly and that will remove the weed uh, issue that we're having. So for myself, as a, as a uh, professional gardener, I can go into a, a, an area and I can tell you what's going on in that land just by looking at the weeds. I can tell you if the soil is lacking nitrogen or if the soil is fertile, if the soil is too compact or if the soil is eroding. All of that I can tell just by identifying and understanding the weeds in that particular area. So they're very, very powerful tools. They are great host plants for insects. So guess what happens if you've got a whole bunch of sow thistle, this one here, growing beside your veggie patch and it's a host plant for lots of aphids and then you pull it out, guess where your aphids are going to go? Into your veggie patch. That's right. So instead of pulling all of these out, we can leave them in there as host plants for other insects. And what that's going to do is attract the ladybugs, which are the ones that eat the aphids, and they're going to come and eat them, and it's going to create that biodiversity of the area. They also provide a, uh, a lot of compost. So if you guys are composting, put your hand up if you're composting. You should see all of your hands up. This is free food for your garden and reducing waste as well. So they make great compost um, and also great chook food. Isn't that great? And of course, as I've mentioned, they taste wonderful. We might get a few tastes in today. We don't know. We'll see how we go for time. Okay, did you guys know that some herbs are actually powerful healing plants? So here at the Living Well Expo, we're all about learning different ways of improving our health. And there's a lot of naturopaths and um, a lot of different vitamins and a lot of really great things down there going around. But did you know that you have access to a lot of these wonderful um, tinctures and solutions and healing herbs right in your own backyard? Yes, that's right. And we'll go into them a little bit more as we go along as well. But just for example, the blackberry nightshade, which is this, this one just here, um, and we'll talk about that one a bit more. This is uh, known in, in history as being a solution for skin diseases, earaches, in, indigestion, internal bleeding, ulcers, ringworm, scurvy, a whole bunch, a plethora of other illnesses. This one can cure, Okay and we're spraying it like mad. We'll talk about th how this one became a weed. It's quite fascinating, actually. Purslane. This is one of my personal favourites here, purslane. It's a beautiful succulent. It tastes absolutely delicious. It grows over summer. Um, and this is an anti-inflammatory, an analgesic, a wound healer for bruises. You can use it topically on your skin for irritations and make into a poultice for cooling your skin. A weed can do all of that. And they're very simple to apply as well. Chickweed is a great weed for using to make a poultice for itching skin. It is also very high in vitamins A and C as well as antioxidants. Chickweed, which is this one here, has over three times more iron than spinach. That's right. Three times more iron than spinach. And you're growing it in your backyard and probably pulling it out without even knowing. Antioxidants, the seeds have been used uh, throughout history for improving digestion. So a lot of people add these to their uh, other grains to improve the digestibility of them. Um, and you can make a spit poultice uh, for profound wound healing with the um, plantain. This is actually a great cure for mosquito bites. And guess where you find it being grown? Around waterways where you'd be prone to um, getting beat getting eaten by a mosquito. So it's funny how Mother Nature tends to give you the cure um, and the solution at the same time. She's, she's a bit like that. You can usually find the solution not too far away from the problem in Mother Nature. Uh, dandelion, one of our favourites, is uh, very high in vitamins A, B6, E, uh, beta and alpha carotene. It's a great liver detox for kidney and the spleen and it has been used for fighting cancer. 
Now, the USA have tested the most nutritious vegetables on the planet and um, the dandelion has come up as number one, around the same as parsley. So this is a great herb. This is a, a beautiful vegetable and so easy to use and I reckon 90% of you have got it growing in your lawns already, the dandelion. Okay, let's get into some weeds, shall we? Bit enough of me wafting on. How are we feeling out there? Have I still got all your attention? No one's falling asleep yet? I like it. Okay, so this is purslane. So you can tell this is purslane by the lobed, lobed um, leaves there. It looks a bit like a succulent. Unfortunately, this one's just gone out of season, so I don't have any samples of this today. But I would say this is my number one favourite edible weed. You might hear me saying that about a few more throughout the demonstration today, though. <laughs> I, I pick favourites. <laughs> so this is a very uh, amazing plant. This is high in plant-based omegas. So if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, plant-based omegas is something that you will be highly prized and sought after because they're quite rare and this is extremely high in them. So I want you to remember purslane, plant-based omegas. It is absolutely incredible. And the bioavailability of these omegas is very high because it also contains protein, potassium, vitamins A, E and C. So apart from it being very, very wonderful, it is also very high in vitamins and guess what? Grows in your pavement all over summer. It is the eighth most common plant in the world, which means if you're somewhere travelling and maybe a few short, short on a few bucks, you will most likely be able to forage somewhere and identify a bit of purslane and add that to your salad and give yourself a little bit of uh, added nutrients there in your travels. Both the seed and the plant is highly nutritious, so you may eat the entire plant and it is very, very prized. As mentioned earlier, it is an anti-inflammatory and a wound healer and soothing for hot skin. So again, the cure for Mother Nature is found very, very close to the problem. So this is growing in summer um, and then also when you might be getting a little bit of sunburn. So here is your solution growing in your pavement. Yes. Uh, I believe it would be okay to freeze. I've never had that question and I've never tried to, but I should try and make some lovely uh, purslane preserves or something like that. What a great idea. <laughs> Sorry? Excellent. Very good. Yes. That would make sense because of the oxalic acid. That's correct. Very true. Thank you. Okay, the blackberry nightshade. So this is the sample of the blackberry nightshade I have here. Now, this is a very, very misunderstood weed. This is one that people commonly mistake for the belladonna or the, uh, the deadly nightshade, which does not grow here in Australia. So you have no problems of misidentifying it. Um, this one here is got that bad reputation because the uh, green berries are poisonous. But I can assure you the blackberries are not and they are highly prized um, and very high in antioxidants. So if you're going out to the shop and buying goji berries, guess what, you're growing its equivalent in the backyard and uh, it can go out and you can get them for free. So uh, you can also eat the leaves and the tender shoots but they need to be prepared correctly via cooking. And this plant here, as mentioned before, has an absolute plethora of cures for ail different ailments. They've been using it for hundreds of years. Um, and yes, it's just absolutely wonderful. It tastes quite nice too. Unfortunately, there are no ripe berries on my sample here, so I won't be sharing that one today. Um, yeah, so I'll just give you a bit of an idea about how this one becomes a weed. So just to give you an idea, each one berry can contain anywhere from 50 to 100 seeds and each bush can contain a few thousand berries on it. And because this is a member of the Solanaceae, a cousin to the tomato, it has a very, very viable seed. So that's why this one becomes a potential weed because it is dropping a very high volume of viable seeds around the place. Okay, so I think if there was a nuclear holocaust, we would have two things that are left over in the world, tomatoes and cockroaches. So I think that this tomato's cousin might be there alongside them growing in the pavement somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, chickweed. So this one here, as I mentioned, three times more iron than spinach. It tastes very similar to snow pea sprouts and is absolutely delicious. It tastes a bit like iron. It's very, very soft, very palatable and probably another one of my favourites. I'm not going to say my absolute favourite, but it's another one of my favourite edible weeds. Um, you can just chew up in the mouth a, a little bit of um, a poultice. If you fall over and scratch your knee, chew it up and pop it on your knee and it will accelerate that wound healing considerably. It is absolutely amazing stuff. Next one, please, Connie. Thank you, love. And we've got that one just here. So that's what that one looks like. Actually, Connie, if you don't mind um, passing around a bit of a sample for that one, we'll have a little bit of a squiz of that one. Okay, so next we have the dandelion. So you can see here um, it's a nice... Uh, please don't mistake this for flatweed or capeweed. It's a little bit different. So you can see the leaves are actually slightly different here and we have both the false and the true dandelion available in Australia. So this is our dandelion and I picked these yesterday after lunch and they're already looking a bit sad because they haven't been sprayed with any enzyme inhibitors like they would at the shops. They're just fresh from the garden. So you can see here, and I'm going to put the mic down for a second... You should eat those. They are edible. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, we have both the true and the false dandelions here. So, I actually make a beautiful uh, roast dandelion uh, tea out of the roots. And it, it's um, when I'm not doing coffee, if I'm on a cleanse or a detox or having a few moments away from coffee, um, dandelion tea is what I have in replacement because it's got quite a coffee-like sort of flavour. Um, excellent. I'll just... Uh, Yes, there's two types. So you must, again, this is uh, very important to correctly identify it. It does look quite similar to capeweed. So capeweed has the smaller um, yellow flower. The flower for the dandelion, on a shorter stem, that's right, the flower for the dandelion tends to be taller um, and more of a round-shaped uh, flower. The leaves are also quite soft as opposed to the capeweed leaves which are a little bit firmer. Um, if you are not sure please send me a photo and hopefully I can identify it um, through the photo. Also um, just on that note there different environments uh, throw off different kind of shapes in the plant. So if you've got a dandelion growing in your pavement or a dandelion growing in your um, lawn they may look a little bit different. Okay, so they might, if, if they don't get enough water, the leaves might be a bit more shriveled. So you might be able to identify it in two different areas and the plant could look quite different. Okay, plantain, here we go. So as mentioned before, this one is a cure for mosquito bites. It tastes a bit like mushroom. So we can get a really nice variance in the flavour by adding quite a few of these different uh, flavoursome weeds. And uh, both the seed and leaves are nutritious and very, very delicious. Uh, so we've uh, had a lot of um, research of this one being carried around by early settlers and things like that um, and both eating the seed and the leaves. The seeds are very, very good for digestion and can be added to grains, made um, into breads and things like that. They are very good for us. And this one coming around is the plantain. Okay, so who likes a little bit of garlic? That's right, Mother Nature provides. And here we have the angled gut onion, which is very, very similar to garlic. This is our wild garlic. So I think that if I was out camping with you guys, and I might get an invitation to your next family camping trip after I say this, but I might be able to go foraging in the forest and get you some lovely flavours. A little bit of mushroom from the plantain, a little bit of zest from some oxalaris, a bit of wild rocket, and possibly I might even be able to find you a bit of wild garlic and create a scrumptious dish like this. Who wants to take me on their next camping trip? Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, has very similar powerful properties to garlic. The entire plant is edible. You will notice it along waterways and it has this gorgeous flower, as you can see, which is also edible. So if you would like to impress your friends, you can feel free to add a few of those flowers in there as well. Thank you. So, um, 
Sure. Uh, no, I think that you might be a bit speaking about the, the is it the Frusha, is the snowdrop? is a bit different, that one, I think. I'm not very good with my common names. I tend to know my botanicals, not to be a smarty pants or anything. <laughs> okay, next we have amaranth. Um, common name for this one is Love Lies Bleeding, is the com common um, garden variety. Uh, and this has an extremely high mineral content. So the US, um, along with the dandelion, have uh, put this in the top eight most nutritional plants on the planet. Okay, and guess what? Chances are you've pulled it out of your garden before and tried to plant some broccoli or something there instead. The world's just gone mad. It's just gone mad. So you might be able to buy some puffed um, amaranth seeds in the shop. You might have seen that there. This is the same thing. They're different um, species of it. Uh, but as you know, they are very, very good for you. The, the young leaves are okay to eat raw, but you, you're best to cook all of them. Again, that's because of that high concentrations of oxalic acid. Um, and this plant here can tolerate full sun and very poor soils, which is a great condition for us to grow in here in Perth uh, because we have very poor soil and a lot of sun, don't we? Okay, so only a couple more left and then I'll open the floor for a few questions. So the sow thistle, this one here um, is highly prized in both um, New Zealand and Chinese cultures. We've got a couple of samples of this. Um, the Kiwis call this one puha. Connie, did you eat this one when you were at home? No. <laughs> it's um, recently come back into the media as being one of the more popular edible weeds. It's very easy to identify. Um, and it is growing absolutely everywhere. There are a couple of different versions of the sow thistle or milk thistle that can be eaten. Um, there's the bobble-headed thistle and a couple of others as well that look similar and they're all edible. So if you're looking for a bit of a safe go-to weed, this is a great one um, to start with. You can also see in the picture I've put quite an immature plant. So this is the best time for picking as well when the plant's quite immature and the leaves are young and tender. As they become older, they build up in that oxalic acid and that is going to make them very bitter. They might be edible, but are they palatable? That is the next question. So pick them when they're nice and young and tasty and delicious. Uh, so yes, the name uh, oleracis actually means vegetable used in cooking. So that's literally the translation of this weed's name. It literally means the vegetable used for cooking, yet it is a weed. Hmm. It's a bit strange, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm just coming along here. One more. Okay, and this one here, the wild lettuce. So um, this is a powerful analgesic and sedative. So they've shown that this um, has very similar sedative powers to your uh, oxycontin and codeines and morphine type of based um, painkillers. And this is a very natural alternative to that. Uh, this is the literal cousin of the lettuce that you are growing in your vegetable garden. And it is growing next to your vegetable garden with absolute ease. The problem is with this one, as you can see, are the very, very uh, large spikes on the, on the back there. So again, this one is another one that you are best to eat as it is very young. Uh, I believe that's a sample there. It's a withered sample, but it's a sample nonetheless. Okay, so yes, um, a, a nice cousin there. So uh, Hippocrates has actually dated this one. He was using this one or has recognised the healing benefits of this one back in 430 BC. So they've known about this plant since back then and they've been using it since back then. And somewhere along the way in our crazy society, we have forgotten just how wonderful it is. Okay. Last but not least of the, of the weeds um, on the slideshow are the oxalaris or the clovers. So these are not the four-leaf clovers in the uh, wee Irish culture, but they are both all, uh, they are all edible. Um, and you can see both the uh, yellow and red flowered oxalaris are both edible and also very delicious. Obviously the name is oxalaris. So uh, they're going to be very high in oxalic acid as well. So best to err on the side of caution and not pick out on these ones. But the best way of controlling these is actually by eating them and trimming off the flowers before they can get pollinated. I have a problem with edible weeds in my backyard and that's that I can't grow enough of them because I keep eating them. So it's a really good way of um, managing, uh, managing those edible weeds out there or your weeds in your backyard. Okay. Awesome, let's go to the next slide, please. 
And uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of the samples that I brought in today as well. Uh, and there's just a bit of follow-up information. So this one here, the coastal pig face, is another one that is edible that we grow around here in Perth. Um, this one here is edible raw, but is best eaten sautéed. And I like to mix this up with a bit of garlic, onion and butter, and it is actually quite delicious, believe it or not. You can also add it to a stew or something like this. Yes, yeah. Uh, so we also have our own varieties of um, rocket. So we have heaps of wild rocket growing around Perth. So for those of you who like to go, you know, and buy some rocket from the supermarket, have a look what you've got growing out there. There are quite a few different uh, naturalised varieties. Question in the back there. Is it by any chance this one called fleabane? Okay, so this is another edible one. This grows like a very tall um, stem here, but when it's young like this one, it is edible. The problem that I have with this particular edible weed, Connie, if you could take that one down to the, to the lady and ask her if that's it, um, is that it's got the slightly furry leaves. And for me, that's a texture that I don't prefer, but everybody is different. Is it that one there? Okay. Um, if you could possibly send me a photo of it, I'll try and identify it for you that way. Yes. Sure. Okay. So we've also got naturalised brassicas or radish. So um, the leaves, are, well, the entire plant of this is edible, but the leaves are the palatable part that you might like to eat. Um, and also the seed pod. So the seed pod is also edible of the wild brassicas and these are very, very peppery and delicious. So if you're making a wild salad, you can add a few of these um, seeds in there uh, to add a little bit of flavour as well. We've also got the, the marrow or false marshmallow. These ones, there's quite a few different varieties of it. The pinwheel, um, this can be used for thickening a stew. So that is um, also a wonderful weed. I might pass that one around too, please, Connie. Okay, so before we finish up, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, the pig face. Yes, it is. Uh, no, there's a couple of different types. There's, there's um, an introduced and a native species that are both edible. Yep, they're both edible. That's right. I think one has a purple flower, one has a yellow flower. Yep, but they're both edible and. Uh, same genus, just different species. Uh, they're best cooked. They can be eaten raw, um, but in my opinion, they're quite bitter, and so they're very nice sautéed with a bit of wild um, garlic or something like that, if you can find it. Yes. Uh, the nutritional tr no, nutritional value. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the specifics in regards to the vitamins of that, but I know that they are very, very high yeah, in minerals and vitamins. Do we have any other questions? This one here? This is uh, a dandelion. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So there's a couple of different varieties of the dandelion. You've got your true, a true and false dandelion. So they look slightly different, but they're both edible. They look very, very similar. <laughs> Uh, the dandelion can be seen all year round. It tends to prefer autumn and spring um, and can die off in a few of those more extreme periods, but I have seen it around in those times as well. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Am I sitting with a, a room full of edible weeds experts, am I? <laughs> so, uh, yes? No, no, that's not the case at all because the sow thistle or the milk thistle does have the white latex sap um, but in the same way um, the Geraldton carnation weed, the euphorbia does have the sap and is not edible. So it's important that we also understand which specific ones are and aren't edible. So not in all cases but I think um, off memory there are quite a few that are edible and aren't that have the white sap. Good question. Thank you. Yes, I do. So we generally hold these um, as a forage out in the out in the 
in the in the in the garden. So if you'd like to come and spend an afternoon with us, we go around and we pick everything, and then we sit down and share it as a lovely picnic. It is a very very fun day. In fact, the picture on the slide was from one of our recent ones, and we hold our um, edible weeds workshops at both the Dunn's Herb Farm and our community garden in Bayswater. Um, so if you would like more information on us and if you'd like to get involved in our organisation, we have a lot of workshops in uh, promoting different areas of sustainable living such as edible weeds and natural beauty, which we have up here um, happening later today. If you'd like to come and make some natural beauty products with us, please come and join us. I think the registration is around $15. Um, you can also like our Facebook page, Instagram. We have a newsletter and a Facebook uh, support group, which is a very good way of uh, joining our community and staying connected with other like-minded people. Um, and if you would like to come along uh, to, the, to the Edible Wheats Forage, if you head down to our store, which is number 46 and 48, um, the first 20 of you to go down there and register um, can get a two-for-one uh, deal. So you can bring a friend along for free if you'd like to register for uh, the workshop today that's coming up on the 24th of June off the top of my head. Um, next slide, please, Connie. So if you'd like to get involved in that, please head down to our stall after the demonstration today. And um, just a bit of Sally Sally, uh, we do have a wonderful gardening package available um, for you for $999, which includes one of our medium garden um, beds, uh, our full range of workshops. So you get to come along to all four workshops. You get our first three months of maintenance and gardening lessons in with that. So it is a full lifestyle package if you would like to live more sustainably and closer to nature. Um, our team can guide you through that. Uh, so I think that might be it for today. Is there one more? No, that's it? No? Okay. So yes, um, thank you all so much for coming today. Please head down to our booth and say hello to our team. We've got heaps of gardening supplies down there as well. So if you want any heirloom seedlings or fertilisers or things like that, or if you have any gardening questions, please do not hesitate to come down to the booth. Say hi to us. Give us a big wave and a big smile. So yeah, thank you all so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.